Hey there, today I continue my journey through the different threat levels tier lists. And for this last video in the series, I am joined by Chewy from the Danger Room to cover all of the 6 plus threat characters, which is admittedly only 9 characters and probably should have just been combined with the 5 threats, but here we are. Uh, before I get to our rankings, there are two things I want to go ahead and address. First is how I use the S2D ranking scale. Uh, S tier characters are characters that are too good. They likely need to be toned down in some way or another. A tier characters are ones that are strong enough to be easily splashed or always see play in their affiliated homes, but don't necessarily need to see any balance changes. B tier characters are, again, solid that will see affiliated play or maybe can see some splash play where there are synergies with a particular leadership. But really, again, characters in this range are in a good spot and don't need any changes, in my opinion at least. C tier is for characters who have reasonable play in one spot or another because of a very specific role or job. Really, characters here probably just need one minor tweak to be brought up into the ranks of an A or B. Minor in the sense of like Iron Man's Repulsor Blast only costing two instead of three power. Then D tier is for the characters that don't see the table that often and are most often seen for narrative styled games or maybe even a meme list. Now that said, the gap from A to D isn't some crazy unsurmountable gap and a character we list as a D can absolutely come into a game and do as much if not more work than an A tier, but I still wouldn't mind seeing the characters that are in D get an apple, a couple of tune-ups uh, to have a better argument to see the table more often because those A tier characters just have much more consistent output. Uh, the second thing I want to address is that I know that tier lists are not the most popular form of content, or at least to some vocal minority they aren't that popular, because uh, they don't require much time on my end of things for setup, editing, and they're really just full of opinions that you by no means have to agree with. But at the end of the day, these are a great reason to bring in other great community members like Chewy to get their thoughts on different characters' values. They're also just kind of fun to make and easy to produce when also editing podcasts and other videos that come out weekly. And while divisive, they are also pretty consistently some of the most popular content in the gaming world. So if this isn't for you, I 100% understand. Leave a comment down below about what kind of content you are looking for, and I can either point you towards some of my other videos or podcasts that fit that niche, or even point you towards someone else in the community who covers what you are looking for. But please be respectful, because even if it isn't for you, at least recognize that there are a couple thousand people at least who do enjoy these. So, with that said, my name is Nate, and welcome to the Gamers Guild. Alright, and today I am joined by Chewy, who is both from the Danger Room, but you also might know him from his YouTube channel. Uh, man, introduce yourself to those who don't know you. Yeah, what's up? I'm just Chewy89. Uh, you know, I've been around the MCP scene since 2019. Um, I started to get going with my YouTube channel probably like 2020-ish, I think. I don't remember, mm -hmm. but I was playing uh, MCP around that time on TTS, uh, played in a few leagues, you know, the TTS league going on. Um, you know, I just started this year with the Danger Room podcast. You know, I'm on and off with them, you know, with the uh, with the podcast and all that. Um, that's been fun. Um, it's been an honor to do that um, and uh, get my perspective on, you know, competitive play for MCP and just give my opinion out there. Um, you know, it's been really, really fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, and that, that's, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Awesome, man. Glad you could uh, join me for what I didn't realize is going to be a super short tier list because there's a total of nine six plus threat characters at this point. And it's like, oh, I could have just wrapped those up with the five threats. But here we are. There are yeah. some things to, to talk about, and it gives us some extra time to talk about some of those things, I guess, if nothing else. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I just thought about that, too. When you told me six threat, I was like sitting there thinking, wait a minute. I had to look at it again. And I'm like, wait, there's not that many. <laughs> It was like, really okay. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason I thought that was like I was like, oh my god, there's a, there's gotta be a lot, right? There's gotta be like, you know, at least twelve, thirteen, something like that. Yeah, you, you would think we no. would be in the double digits of like six plus at this point, but yeah. 
mm-hmm. or not. And I think that's going to tie into some of the conversation we, we have with these. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, I will say real quick. Also, if you guys want to find any more of Chewy, uh, there will be links both to some of the Danger Room content down below as well as to his YouTube channel. Uh, but with that, we have basically going in chronological order as usual, uh, starting with Hulk, who got a Hulk-sized rework. I, I call it a Hulk-sized rework, not because like Hulk is big, but because <laughs> Hulk got one of those massive tune-ups at the 1.5 update. Uh, for me, Hulk is kind of the uh, the pentacle of what a sixth threat can be right now. And goes to A tier for me. What about for you? For me right now, um, this might be, I would have to, I have to put Hulk at S tier. Um, S tier. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is Hulk, Hulk is probably, if not one of the, if not the best control piece in the game right now, currently. Um, he has a uh, size four throw online turn one and it moves medium. Um, he can walk up and throw anybody all over the board, which is really huge, right? Um, and he's just he's just a menace all over the board. He's got twenty hit boxes, which takes a lot, you know, which takes a lot to get down. Well, granted, there's combos that you can do that with and mm-hmm. try to melt him fast, but it still takes a lot of work. And you know, once you start damaging Hulk, start giving him power, you know, he just could do a lot more stuff. Not just that, his spender is amazing. Um, and hands out stagger, and it's also a throw as well. Um, and he has Gamma Leap. He has Action Economy as well. So Gamma Leap, he can move within two. He's on a huge base. He can just chuck you. And I mean, I've won games literally not rolling dice with Hulk. Mm -hmm. I don't have to roll dice with Hulk. That's the problem with people playing Hulk, in my opinion. They sit around thinking, okay, this guy rolls a lot of dice. He should be doing a lot of damage. I've never expected Hulk to daze or KO models. I've expected Hulk to control the character. I've expected Hulk to ruin that character's action economy versus trying to da- daze or KO them, right? Um, okay. The other thing is, too, is like with Hulk, I feel like he's a, almost a must in list now because, you know, we got the boogeyman in the game. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a Hulk problem. I think that's a boogeyman problem. No, no, no. That's what I, that's what I mean. So yeah. the, the fact that the boogeyman is here and you, f- I feel like he's a necessity. You know what I mean? And if I feel like a character is a is a must have in my list, like for example, like I feel Doctor Voodoo is a must have in my list, right? Because he's so dang he's so good. Mm-hmm. Like that's how I feel Hulk is. Like it's just um, that's just my opinion, right? I mean, I, I he he's an amazing character. He's never done. He's never steered me wrong. Um, he just he, he he really does a lot more than you think, especially with that throw online. Um, yeah, the the throw for the cost of two that it is and all that works out really nicely for him, uh, but also to a degree needs it to to be cheap so that he has access to the rest of the kit and what he's mm-hmm. wanting to do on uh, any given turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right. if you're putting him in S tier, I'm, I'm still I'm still sold on the A tier. Uh, but what would you tune down on him? What would you make cost more, take away? Uh, um, I'm of the mindset. And I'm of the belief. Um, that turn one play should be harder to do and shouldn't be a thing in this game. Um, what I mean by that is, is Hulk, like I said, Hulk has a turn one throw. Um, maybe make his throw a little bit more expensive. Um, but again, I mean, he'll still have access to it turn one, even if you make it three. He can't. Well, if you make it four, then yeah, but nobody, he, nobody's going to play him if he has a four cost throw. Probably not. But it's I like mean, there's one make Magneto's base cost throw three and then add size terrain on it. Yeah, I mean that's about the only thing I can think of right now. Yeah, um, I, I think I mean, Hulk is in a in a really good spot personally, yeah. but I, I definitely see uh, right now he he's a a little bit more ubiquitous than he probably should because he answers another piece we're gonna talk about here in a second. Right, definitely. Uh, next up is Ebony Maw with the Space Gem. And I'll let you go first, because I, I have recently had to change position on where I think uh, this guy goes. <laughs> um, I got to say, before everything changed and, and uh, you know, the MCP meta went into uh, shambles, as we can say, with the uh, with the card releases, I had Maw, like, high A. 
possibly fighting for S because, you know, Space Jam wasn't restricted. And the things that Ebony Maw could do, you know, especially with Guardians and everything, like just moving people around and crazy shenanigans. Like, that's where I would have had him if we were in that world. In this world, because Space Jam is restricted, I still have him. I have him like a borderline B, but I still have him like at the back end of it, like the back end of A right now, just because of the restricted slot that Ebony Maw takes. Um, I still think he's really good. I still think he has a size four terrain throw, which is online, by the way, turn one, um, and throws it long, which is nothing to sniff at. I mean, you got a nice size one terrain feature coming at your coming at your way. Um, you're possibly burning brace for impact, or you're taking a whole bunch of damage from a size four terrain throw turn one. Um, not just that, he can help out your other characters with the space gem, you know, move them around and help them out and to do things. Um, and um, you know, to attack him. Now you gotta remind me of this. He he does or he does he take terrain damage or doesn't he? I don't remember. Oh, okay, telekinetic deflection. So if he does play if he pays two for telekinetic deflection, he cannot suffer collision damage. So that's pretty good too. So that's where I would have him. I'd have him like at the back end of like A right now. Or line B. Uh yeah, so I personally had Ma at uh A before all of the gym and other things changed basically. Uh, but with the additional, basically him taking up a restricted slot, I took him down to B just because there are some other mm-hmm. six threats that can fill what he is doing. And he, he's, he didn't have that universal love anymore that just made him super splashable. Uh, I don't know if he was ever knocking on the, the doors of the S tier of needing to get to tune down like some of these other characters mm-hmm. were necessarily, but uh, I, I definitely think he he was like, hey, like take this guy with your Guardians of the Galaxy, take this guy with your Spider Foes, take this guy with any number of places because mm-hmm. you're able to move, gym yourself to the center point, and still have an attack and enough guaranteed power for a size four terrain throw turn one, uh, and that mm-hmm. that's dazing somebody on the middle line most of the time. Yeah, which is uh, gross in a good it's way. Really gross, yeah. <laughs> And on top of that, Ebony Maw is fun to play too. By the way, the the, the times that I've had that I played with him, I've always enjoyed playing with him. Honestly, he never bores me. Honestly, dude, dude is a ton of fun. Uh, always bring the shush tactic card because oh God. Uh, yeah. your opponent doesn't see it coming because it's not something that has been played in such a long time. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, tons of fun. Uh, next up is Doctor Strange. Honestly, with either of the gems probably to his benefit the soul gem because the time gem is pretty redundant with what it does now and what dr strange does anyway Mm -hmm. so where do you see strange with the soul gem going man poor dr strange with the soul gem i played i I played him a lot with soul gem that's the only gem i ever played him with Mm -hmm. um fortunately for me right now I think he's a C tier character right now. Um, I think if you're I, devoting the resources into the gym, I'm I'm gonna agree because we had him at, yeah. at the five threat. He ended up uh, in like low A, high B kind of territory. Sure, because yeah. he he has some splashability at five threat. Uh, with what he's doing, he's really fun with storm and the shenanigans you can pull off there. But man, six threat as a splash is tough. I mean, it's tough, and then, like, he has no action economy, too, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, he lost the, he lost the ability to do pentagram turn one to, to transport himself, or, you know, that that, that weird combination that, that was going around back in the day with R&D and that, um, mm-hmm. you know, and he really has no other ways to, um, it's just, it's just the action economy problem that he has. He has to move, attack. And then if he gets thrown, I mean, he's weak to throw damage, which is a lot of characters in the game, right? And it's, but if you look at Ebony Maw, you know, Ebony Maw is a way to negate the throw damage. Yeah, he's got Neither, the uh, the collision yeah. prevention and all that. Correct. And Doctor Strange has none of that. So he has the reroll all, but it only works on attacks. And when he attacks and when he's defending, but it's not mm-hmm. for collisions. So there's a way to get around him there. Um, 
it's just yeah, I just have him at C. I mean, for six threat, I, I find him very underwhelming at six with with the soul gem. Even though he has the extra power and everything, and he can get to crimson bands faster, it's just you know against a really good player that knows what they're doing. You know, if they start chucking him and start repositioning him, and like you have to pick and choose what you want to do, it becomes mm-hmm. tough. Honestly, I mean, I do love his healing. I mean, healing's amazing, right? The fact that you know med pack is gone, that's pretty cool. He adds defense dice, that's pretty cool. Um. It's just how much power do you have to constantly keep doing that? And yeah, you know the, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the soul gem helps with that. But at the end of the day, like, would you rather have just brought five threat Dr. Strange instead? Right. Correct. And right. I think where we're at currently, the answer is yes. You, yes. you probably just brought <laughs> Dr. Strange. Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we've got uh, our first character that has broken the meta multiple times over. <laughs> Uh, and that's going to be Thanos, uh, okay. who I think has multiple times in his career been an S tier character, but I don't think he's there currently because of the uh, forementioned restrictions that uh, we we complained about for good old Space Maw. Where do you think uh, Thanos belongs yourself, though? So if Thanos is, if we're talking Thanos without gems, I really don't think he's a good character, mm-hmm. but. Thanos, obviously, we're playing, we're doing Thanos with gems. So, Thanos with gems, he's still A tier, um, high A. Um, granted, mm-hmm. yeah, you have to take restrict slots to do the broken stuff, you know, with Space Gem and all that. It's still really strong and it's still really effective. Um, I've been liking him with uh, power in mind lately, to be honest with you, because mm-hmm. I don't, I can free up the restrict the slots and I can have a lot of power to do stuff. And mind gem is a, an advance, so it's pretty cool. I lose out on the action economy with the space gem, but I can still do what two cosmic portals and I can still um, mind gem somebody and put them back there and then just get smacked a little bit. Yeah, it's I mean, he, pretty, he's, he becomes yeah. a, a control monster, he becomes a control monster. That's that. And he still is. Um, I've been heard. I've, I mean, I've heard arguments um, about, you know, hey, just take him with space reality. That's your restricted. And then just play with a whole bunch of tactics cards. Pat Dunford was doing that beautifully. And it was working out for him in the league. Um, mm-hmm. So the fact that he made it that far with that and, you know, he ran into the other thing that's, you know, playing in the meta right now. And that's what beat him. I mean, that that's pretty good. So I, I still have him at you know, high A for sure. Not S tier because of the restricted. I, I, th- I think that hurts him. If he was, if we weren't playing in the restricted, he's S tier. I mean, that's, there's no, yeah. <laughs> you the, know, the, the gyms being restricted is what brought him down. And yeah. like, a, like originally he was contained in his little box before the 1.5 update, because that's when they're like, Oh, so like gyms don't take up roster slots anymore. And it's like, Oh, I can splash, splash Thanos like anywhere. And it only takes up one slot now. And right. So we, we've come full circle. I think we found a, a good happy spot again where like if he's in black order, that's fine. But if he's you're trying to just splash him everywhere, he's not this uh, crazy piece. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, now let's talk about the only other eight threat model in the game. Uh, Dormammu. And I personally think D is for Dormammu. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you there. I think the Ramon is D tier, um, unfortunately. Um, I just think that. See, here's the thing. The other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, we we're talking about the game with you know with some people, and uh, we we're talking about a certain guy, and um, I was we were looking at both cards between the Boogeyman and Dormammu, mm-hmm. and. You could just tell the difference between one was treated with care and caution. The other one wasn't. Dormammu is that character <laughs> that was treated with care and caution and maybe to a fault, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it hampered him a lot. But I understand why they did that. You know what I'm saying? I, I get yeah. the logic behind it. Um, but because of that, he's just not really good. I mean, his builder is a gainer, right? Not even. I think it just uh, no. Sap, it right? has the chance to sap power. It has and that's the chance it. to sap, and he has no rerolls, and it's on a wild, right? And that's one out of eight. Yeah, it's a you roll a lot of dice, but and on top of that, he has the weird shenanigan with the with the failures, which I've I've one shotted characters with that. That's cool, but it doesn't come up often. Um, yeah, at least when I played him, I played him a ton. And I was trying to get him to work, and I'm like, you ain't cutting it. 
<laughs> no, yeah, no. It's so- um, but to make, I'll make this argument for him. I think if he were in a world where he had, let's say if he came in a box and had maybe, I don't know, seven to eight tactics cards and they were pretty dang good. I think he'd be legit. I think the lack of tactics cards for him right now, along with the bad kit, is is hurting him. I think if he had really good tactics cards, maybe he can come up a little bit, right? You know what I mean? I mean, he's got um, at least one really good tactic card bringing a uh, one though, right? Like I feel like he needs a couple. Oh, no, like he, he needs more. Seeing yeah. what like, Hydra and Shield have gotten, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he could definitely use some more. I think his overall card could use uh, some significant tune-ups and changes. Oh my God. Does it ever? Yeah. I think a lot of his strength that we don't recognize is in his leadership and at the ability to just say, "Hey, splash anybody." Yeah, because if that was on like anybody else's leadership, like it it breaks them instantaneously. Yes, those. yes. Uh, correct. So th- there's a lot of things that AMG were experimenting here with, obviously, and a lot of things I think they got right. But like, man, how much would it help him if even just in defense roles you counted skulls in both your role and the attacker's role? Because mm-hmm. like right now he he only has that on his attacks. And so on defense, he's a little bit more, a little bit more vulnerable. Oh, absolutely. Uh, He has to start spending his power, which he kind of has a hard time coming across. So maybe make, may even just make his attack a gainer, give it a seventh dice or something, since there's not a lot of consistency there. Right. A lot lot of things to, to work on. Uh, And, let, let me also just say, Dormammu is still a very viable model and very scary with Smash. Oh my god, yeah, he still has some scary. He still has some scary things. A dice can happen, right? I mean, yeah. I've been I've been diced by Dormammu every once in a while. I mean, mm-hmm. it happens, and I'm like, oh my god, like what happened, right? Yeah, um, so you, you can take a, a Dormammu versus a Hulk fight and come out on top of that. You can. Uh, okay. it, but and that's the, like that's the thing though. Like usually mm-hmm. you're gonna want the the characters in the A tier over the D tier. Mm-hmm. Give some some buffs, make them a little bit better. But like you you can still play these characters and feel fine about it. You don't yeah. Like hold your head high, I guess, if you were a Dormammu fan. Right. We want to give you some extra legs though. Right. Absolutely. And 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 the other thing is too, like uh, Dormammu. I've never had a bad time playing with Dormammu ever. Mm-hmm. Never. Oh, dude, I, I, he's a heck I of a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a heck of a lot of fun. He's a great looking model. Um, it's fun coming up with combinations with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, with characters that can do some crazy things turn one with him, right? You know what I mean? And you know, that part of it's fun. It's just when you actually play him, it's like uh and you're playing a tournament, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I see why. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's just, you just get back to reality. And it's like, okay. Um, but yeah. Yep. Uh, next up, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to the end and talk about Malekith because I, I don't feel like you can fairly talk about Dormammu without talking about Malekith and kind of the massive disparity in, uh, in game design between these two characters. Yeah, there's a huge disparity. One, Malekith costs one less threat than Dormammu. Two, uh, uh first off, uh, oh, Malekith ahead, is sorry. an S tier. <laughs> Like the, 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 oh, the, oh, let's, oh, let's go ahead and clarify in it, case it, it, everything <laughs> you've talked about up to this point did not make this clear. And not just like in this video, we've been talking about the kitty cat problem in every other tier list video. And, and this is, yeah, here he is. Here he is. Um, and yeah, there's no debate. If anybody doesn't think he's S tier, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but he is, um, his threat range is huge. I keep saying this, his threat range is 10 and a half inches. If you want to look at a range ruler and understand how that works, grab a range five ruler wherever he is, drop a range five ruler, add a half an inch. That's his threat range. He literally can charge, move, attack, and then do all kinds of crazy stuff. That mm-hmm. that if that enough doesn't tell you what this character, how those characters just busted right now, I don't know what else to say. Um but yeah, like I mean, he's got 10 health, I mean he's four across the board. Um, you know, he's affiliated with Cabal, which also that's another thing that I, I, I really disagree with, with, with AMG, um, was that I don't, I don't see Malekith as a Cabal character. I don't get that. Um, personally, if someone made this suggestion to me, they probably should have done like a, uh, like a villains of, of Asgard or something like that affiliation with him. Right. And put him on his own Island and maybe treat him like Dormammu, you know, 
mm-hmm. um, or whatever. That's my personal opinion because the fact that they put him in Cabal, they get they gave him access to Dark Rain, and just to be honest, maybe maybe they just forgot about that card. Maybe just forgot about Dark Rain because not a lot of people are playing Cabal. But I mean, you add that card with massive rerolls. I mean, his spike potential. He turns fails into crits. It adds extra dice. I mean, mm-hmm. he did thirteen damage to my Hulk. Not even thinking um, at at Nashcon. I mean, he literally got attacked once. Dark rained. Malik has went into him. 13 damage. He was dazed. That was it. That was all she wrote. And I, I couldn't win the game past that. Um, it's just, and you know, it, it, his, uh, yeah, there's a lot. I don't know. You, you can go ahead if you want. <laughs> just, I, I have more, but Nate, I'll give you the floor. Go ahead. I, I appreciate it, man. No, it, it uh, there, there's a lot of things surrounding Malekith. Uh, the the threat range that you mentioned is his one action threat yes. range, which Correct. I feel like it's important to mention because he can also, if he, like if he's got the two actions, he can get pretty close to anywhere on the board that he needs to. Since even as early as turn one, he can almost attack the opponent's deployment zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's got uh, all of that, which is. Uh, crazy he's he's super efficient at killing he's probably a little bit tankier than he should be between both the defensive uh cloak of shadows which is letting him count his skulls as crits along with the fact that you can't reroll dice into him which is usually like that big consistency is where you're looking for your ways to deal with those big characters is that vulnerability and he he negates that vulnerability it's not like this is a black cat who's like oh yeah like you can't re-roll into me. It's like, okay, but you're only a, a three, three, three with five health. Like you can just spike on that. A spike doesn't necessarily always uh, get Malekith because that spike might be a spike of like five damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's like, oh no, you spiked and I didn't hit all the successes I needed to. So I only block two because I also turned this failure into a crit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the dude's real strong. He, there's a lot about him that needs to be tuned down to come back down to earth. I think. Or... Okay. Yeah. So Malekith is nasty. Uh, overall powerhouse. Plenty of things that could be tuned down on him. He he's too efficient in a single activation for mm-hmm. the amount of damage he can cause. His own durability is really high because he has a high health pool in addition to fours across the board in addition to being able to count sk- skulls as crits uh, and then the the cherry on top of all of that is you can't re-roll and modify dice into him which is usually that method of like guaranteeing your big kills as you send your consistent characters after the the hulks of the world usually uh, and him turning that off just means that you're you're just kind of hoping to throw big piles of dice and roll well and keep your fingers crossed, which is a little unfortunate when you have to go into such a, a big threat. Okay. Uh, but I think the, the thing that is really worth looking at here is uh, the disparity of once we hit seven plus threat... Uh, cause like right now, like Hulk, Ma and strange are kind of like evenly spread out a little bit more. Uh, but Thanos has been a, a character that's broken, uh, the game a, a couple of times with how strong he is able to be. And then we've got like Dormammu down here at the D Malekith up in the S, uh, and it, it, it shows, uh, that there, I don't know, just a, a gap here is kind of resounding of, uh, the difficulty of uh, design for once you get into these higher threat characters, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's really difficult. And it, the thing is, it's like, okay, the seven threat, it's got to be a monster. Eight threat, it's got to be ridiculous. But like like we just mentioned Dormammu, like you, you see the caution, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, we can't. And that's not a bad thing to do, right? Now, granted, that turned Dormammu into whatever he is. Um, but... In there, you can you can see where okay, maybe I can adjust him here, and maybe that makes him the eight threat monster he needs to be, right? And not be so over- overbearing. I think with Malekith, they pushed the boundaries a little too far, mm-hmm. and it was like okay, you know, now I'm hoping that with this, 
they know where to dial it back a bit. Um, and with with Malekith, honestly, it just I need to be able to. And if, if I'm playing against him, I need to feel like I can take this cat down when the person makes a mistake. Mm-hmm. Right now, if I feel like he makes a mistake, it doesn't matter because it's like, OK, he's here. OK, I have a character that can reroll dice. Oh, can't do that. Oh, OK. Uh, I can throw things, but I don't, it's only once per turn. All right. And uh, he <laughs> he counts fails his crits, so he gets he gets extra dice. I can't put hex on him. I can't stung him. I could put stagger, <laughs> right? So it, it's just, it, it turns into this thing. Like, um, I just, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, honestly, I, I think I have an idea what to do to the character. If, if you know, if you're in my hands and still make him a threat. I just want the character to be effective and a lot more counterplay into him rather than narrowing it down. Like right now, I feel like it's very narrow of what you could do. <laughs> Um, yeah, there there aren't a lot of answers to them, and and granted, there doesn't always need to be like answers that are just gonna like lock him down because like right now, Black Cat is one of the more popular, cheaper answers. Hulk is on the the higher threat cost answers, but like it's a it's a narrow field, and they're not even direct counters in the sense that like yes, they will actually work. They are things that you do to slow down Malekith. Uh, right, kind of a thing, but that we will we will stop harping on the cat. You guys yourselves, if you have played into him or played with him, know how uh, how strong this guy is. So yeah, uh, we've got three left, and let's uh, let's go with She Hulk. Where do you think uh, she belongs currently? Um, I she's it's funny because I think she's pretty good into the cat, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's it because um I would say before cat. Probably B, right? Okay. Um, I still think maybe she's B. It, it, like, I like, I want to say she's A in a, in a, in a weird way, but I feel like she's a high B right now. Yeah, I, I think she's. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about high B. I think she's solid B though for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she, she's seen affiliated play, whether that is with the Avengers, whether that's with Shield. Uh, mm-hmm. not to mention A Force. She's kind of super clutch there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would I wouldn't have minded seeing uh some ch- like a small change on her car, so like maybe there's an argument for C tier. Yeah. But all in all, she she does everything that you kind of hope that she would. Mm-hmm. Uh, a range two place on her wouldn't be bad, but like she's got the aggressive and bodyguard, so that like yeah. combination makes her still a, a mobile uh, character as well. Yeah. And she has a throw. She has a size four throw. Um, yep. The difference between her and yeah, like you just mentioned it. The difference between her and Hulk is Hulk has a way to move around, with leap. Um, right now, She Hulk doesn't, but She Hulk was designed to be different. She Hulk was designed to be the bodyguard. Was designed to be constantly in your face when she gets attacked and just moves forward, right? Um, so, I mean, if she had a leap like Hulk, oh my god, <laughs> right? Like we, we would yeah. be in a different world right now. Um, but yeah, I, I would say you know I agree with your with your statement actually. Uh, so now you're you're probably a little bit partial here to to Mags, who is your boy. <laughs> uh, where where would you put uh, the um, master of the Brotherhood? I'll just tell you right now, he's borderline. He's a B tier character. You know I what? Mean. I don't disagree with you. I think you're right. I think he is so good on the table, especially with brotherhood and he's bringing his leadership and all those kind of things. Yeah. He's B. Uh, um, I, I really struggle almost putting him in B, but he's there just because of what he can do. He does. Mm-hmm. He does do a lot of stuff. Like let's just, let's not get it twisted. Right. Like he, his terrain throws are really strong. Um, the fact that he can reroll dice within two, he has, um, he has control. He can push any size. Right. That's pretty cool. in any direction too, by the way, any direction. Um, so, you know, and he has a defensive tech where he can't get pushed or thrown. Um, his biggest issue currently right now is that the big, the, the boogeyman is around and the boogeyman just ruins him. It's not even mm-hmm. funny. It's not even close. Like, it's bad. It is hysterically bad. If you put Magneto on the on the board and you know they're bringing Malekith, you're in trouble. Because he just... Because the other problem is, too, is... uh. He moves small, right? And and deservedly so. 
<laughs> I'm not arguing for him to get a faster <laughs> movement, but he does move small. And when you chuck Magneto after Asteroid M is played, he becomes relatively harder to play and get into the game. Um, and, you know, with Malik, it's just throwing him because the charge is after the attack is resolved. He can just chuck Magneto. And now once you played it, once you played Asteroid M, now Magneto's thrown. Now Magneto's probably outside of range three. Now you got to move an attack versus attack, attack, and then throw stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that you can't reroll into him defeats being within two. Um, so there's just a lot. I mean, I, I have him at B though. I won't lower him past that, but I don't think he's an A at all. Um, if anybody does, <laughs> we got to talk, <laughs> but he's, <laughs> he's a solid B. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, I think he, uh, I think hopefully the, the cat gets, a little bit of tuning and I don't know. I think regardless, he, he stays a, a solid B and that that's true. To I still think so too. Yeah. A, a lot of the different six threats because it, it's just so hard to splash like three and four is where you're ideally right. splashing characters. Right. And because there are so few of the, the six threats uh, there, there's going to only be probably one or two that you want to splash anyway. Uh, and, which leads me to yeah. talk about Hulkbuster. Uh, probably, I don't know. You you said Hulk, but I think he's the just because of the guarantee guaranteed control that uh, Buster brings. I, I think he's the the epitome of the the control beater oh, character. Man. Oh man, I love Hulkbuster. I think Hulkbuster is a well designed character. Mm-hmm. Um, I love his control. I love the fact that he has action economy. So my things. My opinion of a character that's good and viable in this game, like, do you have action economy, right? Do you have any sort of control? Um, what's your damage output look like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those are the three things I look at, right? Okay, what are you doing? And Hulkbuster, all, he oh, damn near fits about all three, right? Um, you know, turn one's got the ch- uh, the charge with the sh- with the shot, right? So he can go and do that. If he whiffs on an attack, he still gains a power, which is really good, by the way. Um, so that he has consistency with power generation. Okay. And, you know, the damage is nothing to sniff at. It's a six die energy attack, right? And mm-hmm. energy defense, we know, is on the low end. It's not physical, where physical, you know, it's like four to, you know, three to four. Energy, we really don't see that high, right? So we can take advantage of lower defense pools push characters and the push is any size by the way mm-hmm. <laughs> that's another thing the push is any size so um you know he can sure he's old push exactly sure he's old push and um you know he can he can control the cat a little bit with the push once the cat comes in he can just you know you play that game of chicken where you know hey okay cat comes in now hulkbuster and hulkbuster does this thing and uh also hulkbuster has a minus one damage um you know which helps him survive that minus one damage goes a long way sometimes um, you know, Juggernaut, prime example. He does the minus one damage, and granted, his his doesn't have a minimum, right? And his is way better. I mean, Hulkbusters is not as good, but it's still usable, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's just I love him honestly, and where I would put him honestly right now, I I would love to put him in a. I think he's a B character, right? And yeah. The reason why I put him in B. He has a terrain throw versus a character throw. The terrain throws mm-hmm. are fat, but people throwing is so strong. And I thought Hulkbuster was a candidate to throw people because, you know, he's so big, right? And, uh, you know, maybe he would have to throw just like Hulk, you know, because he's the Hulkbuster. If he's not throwing, you know? <laughs> but um, that I put him at B, honestly. Um, that, that's my opinion. But, yeah, what do you think? No, I, I fully agree. Uh, I think uh, Hulk and Thanos are kind of the the epitome of the the much more splashable uh, mm-hmm. characters right now because I, I, that's just kind of where they are. Uh, but Hulkbuster himself is completely viable, extremely playable. Uh, he's got the damage reduction. He has the action economy. He's got multiple sources of damage output for when you want it. Gar- guaranteed control. Uh, these are all just things that check off the checklist. Uh, if you need his leadership, you 
have it, but it's not necessarily something that you're probably going to run with. Yeah, that's that's one thing I lost my I lost that battle. I was fighting for Hulkbuster's leadership because I'm like, you know what? Minus one damage for, for throwing is that terrible. But once you start to really play it and look at it, you're like, mm, OK, <laughs> yeah, there, there's just so many times uh, that you're, you're going to go up against a squad that doesn't have throws or maybe has like one throw that gets used twice in the game. And it's just kind of like, oh, well, yeah, Sam's leadership, which, again, super good. Or Steve's leadership, which is, again, super good. Super good right? Just kind of uh, out, outdo what uh, Hulkbuster's leadership is capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. 100%. Awesome, man. Well, this is our six-plus uh, threat tier list. We've got uh, Hulk on that borderline S of, uh, of needing uh, some some toning down, but uh, leaving him at the, the tip of the top of the A up there with Thanos. Uh, and then quite a few filling out the B and thankfully not much to see in the C and D tier where just uh, some minor tweaks are made. And really even Dr. Strange, I feel like is it's not necessarily that he needs tweaks. It's just where things are right now. You're probably better running him off as a five threat instead of six Agreed. threat strange. Agree with that hundred percent. Awesome. Well, thank you again for uh, joining, man. And uh, to everybody here, thank you all for watching. And until next time, keep on gaming.